Okay, I'm here with uh, Frederick Ram, yes. who's uh, been on the OSMF board for uh, a couple of years now, is it? Ah, uh, one year only. One year. How are you finding that? Um, Hard work. Uh, okay, I, 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 I can't speak about this in front of the camera. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's not as much hard work, it's, it's rather uh, things, things going a bit slower than I would have expected them to go. There's always like a little, little more of politics and personalities coming into play than you would think. From the outside it always sounds like, okay, the OSMF has decided to do this. The, you always picture a group of people making sensible discussions and have sensible decisions. It's not always like that. <laughs> um, mostly, of course, mostly. They're all uh, sane, grown-up people, but um, yeah, it um, occasionally is a bit more, more difficult than I would anticipate. But yeah, it's a small organization. It's not like we're it's not like we're a big corporation turning over hundreds right. or thousands of pounds. So it's probably appropriate to be just a small club of people. I mean, OSMF work is is a telephone conference once a, once a, one month normally one hour of telephone conferencing every month plus a little bit of mailing list activity. Um, that's about all. So, so the actual um, meeting time, the amount of uh, time spent on those things is fairly small, actually. It's fairly small, actually. I mean, occasionally, if you want, if if you want board to sort of um, uh, agree to a proposal that you have, you might have to spend some time to flesh it out properly and explain it to the others um, to, to to get their buy-in. But uh, it's not like you're slaving away all the time. And do you feel like the focus of the, of the board is very similar to what we see externally as a focus for the organization? So, I mean, overall, we're, we're building a free map of the world, right? And does it feel like the board is concentrating on that, or what sort of things are you concentrating on? I, I, I would say yes. Uh, you, you can say that. Um, the board isn't actually isn't actually doing lots of stuff proactively. It's just like, you know, you have the working group, you have people saying, oh, uh, we'll probably need that and that amount of hardware and, and computer stuff in the following years. And then board will think about, okay, how can we secure uh, funding or what, what support will they need from from board level to make certain decisions or something. It's not it's not that we, we sit there and say, okay, what can we do to, to still be big project 10 years from now or something, it's not like, it's not like that. It's more, a, uh, it's, it's more an administrative role, like, you know, sort of juggling around some things. So as well as that, you're on the, uh, the DWG, of course, the Data Working Group. Uh, yeah, that, that's actually, the DWG stuff is actually more work than it's keeping you busy. <laughs> on, the, on the board, yeah. Because at DWG, you actually um, deal with individual people who have problems with other people in the project or, uh, or who are causing problems. A certain amount of dispute resolution going yeah, on there. Exactly, there. discuss stuff and uh, try to understand what people are on about. Often there are also language issues mm -hmm. because you communicate to people in English and, uh, and English might not be their native language so it's sometimes difficult to understand what is going on and why is this person upset with that other person and so on. Sometimes these things have a back story, you know, like like children playing and one 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 kid coming, Mama, the other guy took away my sandbox or something, my, my, my bucket or something. And then you have to find out, yeah, but that's that's only because something else happened in, uh, in before that which you haven't been told about. I so guess the, I guess one of the main messages about DWG is that um, a lot of disputes and conflicts within the community are are settled within the community without without a need to go to the DWG normally, aren't they? Um, so it's really dealing with those edge cases where people are. It's actually, I, I would love to, to to second that, but I don't really have the numbers because I mean stuff that is settled within the community doesn't usually doesn't even right, bubble yeah, up to, to DWG. Up, yeah. um, often, yes, if something bubbles up, then people say, "I've tried to solve this internally, but uh, I failed, and I wasn't able to communicate with the other party, or the other party didn't react, or something." Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes people come to DWG right away without actually making any effort to clear things up internally. And then we ask them to, we ask them, hey, have you been talking to the other guy? If not, then maybe try and send them a polite message. And, and right, then I mean, if uh, you... A lot of this stuff happens as a friendly community, I think, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so hopefully, normally. Um, so
So as well as doing DWG, of course, you're um, doing geofabric. You, you work it. You work in a geo consultancy. Would you call it? Um, based in Germany. How is all that going? It's going quite quite well. Geofabric uh, profits from the popularity of OpenStreetMap. We have many people calling us and saying, "Oh, um, I was surfing the web for." Um, someone to set up a tile server or something and, and uh, I found your website which is essentially a, 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 well that, that's that's because people google for OpenStreetMap initially and then they some, somehow they find us or are referenced uh, referred to us by the community who then say well, if you need someone to do that for you then yeah. it's, uh, it's still a nice job it's still often requires some, some educating of potential clients who uh, don't always understand how OpenStreetMap works, what, what OpenStreetMap is about. Occasionally you have clients who, who actually want to do something that the license wouldn't allow and you have to tell them, well, yeah, um, that doesn't, it doesn't work that way, but here's another idea you, what you could do. Um, on the whole, um, on the, the whole... Geofabric's it's always been a, a shining example, I think, of um, a company doing that sort of consulting thing around OpenStreetMap and, and making making money on top of OpenStreetMap but by helping people to, to use it and helping people to understand it. Yeah, I think that, that it has worked quite well for us to provide quite a lot of stuff for free to the community like the download server and stuff so, so, so we are relatively well known and one of the first people to be mentioned if someone asks for commercial services so that, that works has worked quite well and I hope that the community has also benefited from it. So it's, yeah, cool. it's nice. So you're doing a talk uh, tomorrow, I think you're going to be presenting uh, DWG very briefly, but, al but also a talk about mailing lists, uh, problem yeah. problems with the mailing list. No, actually, actually my talk is about, because this whole conference is about change and I'm trying to uh, highlight some things, uh, I'm trying to highlight how the project has evolved and changed. Um, by looking at the mailing lists and by providing some snapshots from early postings and saying, look at, in 2006, the following was uh, postulated or something, someone said something, someone had an idea, and look how this has evolved. Mm -hmm. um, it's, personally, I'm a mailing list guy, I, I use mailing lists a lot and I enjoy communicating with other project members. And I think that, uh, I think that in the past some people have talk badly about mailing lists and saying, well, it's all just, you know, all bike shedding going on, people complaining all the time. I think it's not quite fair. I think mailing lists are still uh, a vibrant uh, environment for OpenStreetMap members to exchange ideas and, and, and do work together, actually. That's personal view, certainly. So, fascinating topic. Looking forward to that. Uh, that's tomorrow, isn't it? Yes, um, how are you enjoying the conference so far, otherwise? Well, I've already met lots of people, as always, in this. For me, that's always the main reason to go to these conferences, to meet all the people. Um, of course, there are interesting talks as well, but it's not... I can, I can look at the talks on video, but I can't actually meet all the people on video and, and talk with them in person. So that's, that's the thing, thing I enjoy most. Excellent. Well, I think we're missing some interesting talks right now, so maybe we should get back stuck into it. Good to talk to you, Frederick. Thank you very much. Thank you.